I know there's a lot of y'all that's tight and y'all are hot still. And y'all are just like, this guy is with this Jesus nonsense. This guy is with this God nonsense. Listen, one of the things that hurts my heart the most is that I was in that position. I was the one that hated Christians. I hated Christians. I was against it because I grew up in the church, you know, and then I had my hurts and I was vehemently against God. So I know, bro, like, I can't even, I can't even blame you. What I can blame you for is... Is this guy trolling? Is this satire? People are getting a lot more existential whiplash than I had perceived because I kind of just forgot the nature of time on the internet and how subjective it is to everyone because I was offline for so long. And I have been living my life, but no one else has been living it. And so all they see is what is on the internet. So my disappearance to them is sort of a blip on the map, whereas me, it's a full four years of lived experience. So everything makes sense in my head. But to most people, seeing that I am now Christian, a dad and a husband, they're getting their wigs blown back. For those of you that are confused, there is a long two and a half hour testimony video on my The Almonte Films channel and it doesn't make me look good, okay? As soon as people heard the word God, they sort of tuned out everything else and so they're asking a bunch of questions that are already answered in the video or they just simply stopped watching the video because a lot of people do have traumatic experiences as it relates to anything revolving around God or religion, especially Christianity. People hear the name Christ and it is a stumbling block to them. And if you watch the full video all the way through, it still doesn't make me look good. I know this. I spent quite a bit of time, you can see the dates at the bottom of the videos, doing this. I think it's funny that when I was anxious, I was depressed, I was dissociated, I was doing and saying all of these crazy things on the internet. And no one ever said that I need therapy or that I was going crazy to seek help. But now that I am whole, full, sober-minded, not doing drugs, not drinking, and because I proclaim the name Christ, people are saying I'm having a manic episode, that I need to go to the psych ward, that I've gone crazy. We've lost him. I know that nowadays everyone just throws around these psychological terms, but a manic episode doesn't last that long. <laughs> if you look at the dates on the videos, you can see that Everything and how I said it and what I said was very calculated and I'm very aware and conscious of how I'm saying these things and what I am saying. So I know that it doesn't make me look good. The purpose of the video was not to make me look good at all. If I wanted to defend myself and do damage control, I would have done that three years ago. I think a lot of people would have been way more accepting if I didn't come back talking about God and I just came back cursing out my accusers and just throwing everyone un under the bus. But that's not where my heart was with that video. And I know a lot of people just simply didn't watch the whole video. So they're commenting and saying, oh, you didn't address anything. I did. I just didn't address it the way you want me to address it. And I feel that I get it. It must be very disappointing after all of those years to think that somebody's going to do one thing and it, it, it completely is it's a complete 180 from who I was and it's a complete 180 from who you expected me to be or what what you expected me to say. So all in all, the purpose of the video was not to defend myself. I have an advocate with the father. Here's the fact of the matter. We have all had lies told about us. We've also had truths told about us. Now, if we were at the great white throne of judgment and everything was laid out and all of these accusations were thrown out, both the ones that are true and the ones that are false. Would you declare yourself innocent or would you declare yourself guilty? Someone that is sober and aware of the flawed nature of humans would declare that they were guilty and they would plead for the mercy of God. Because it doesn't matter if you sit there trying to defend yourself for the lies told about you. That testimony video was not to be judgmental of anyone else. It was talking about my sin and the bad things that I've done, my journey with God. Now, I understand though a hit dog is gonna holler. So if you're watching that and you feel judged by the things that I'm saying, 
It's probably because you relate to me far more than you're willing to admit. But that's me in my mind. I also had to sit and ponder as to why, how I was perceiving things, other people didn't perceive it that way. And it's because there's genuinely people that just found out about the allegations days or a week before I dropped that testimony video or didn't even find out until I said something in the testimony video. So the way time is so subjective um, emotionally to people is it looks like, oh, this is his response to the allegations. He's going to jump. But it's not right. It's It's been three years. My response, if it was really to address in full detail everything that would have been happened. This is talking about what happened over the span of four years with the context of my entire childhood. And so, yeah, it looks like I didn't address the allegations because the allegations are a small blip, but a huge cataclysmic part of the arch and trajectory of my life coming back into God. So it was important. I had to say something about it. I couldn't just never mention it. But then also, as it pertained to the video and the purpose of the video, it wasn't to defend myself or to make any kind of uh, legal claim against it or to try to vindicate myself. God's purpose with me isn't to defend myself nor to vindicate myself. But I understand how it looks to people that just found out about it, where it's like, this is just a red herring and I just threw this out there as a defense from the allegations. So that's why we can't be on one accord, but we're in a dissonant chord full of tension and no resolution. Nonetheless, a dissonant chord still has harmony. So, Mr. Alav, are you not the realest ninja alive anymore? Unfortunately, no. Ninjas lurk in the shadows, and now I've been set as a light on a hill. And I'm not non-binary, but don't get it twisted, I'm still a bad bishop. And yes, I am a dad, so you're gonna get dad jokes. I'm just gonna be transparent. But I'm not a transparent. As for the Almonte films, there will still be more films to come. Uh, documentaries, um, film reviews. I would like to talk about The Chosen at some point. Initially, the testimony video wasn't a comeback video. It was more like a drive-by shooting or like a fly-by nuke because I know a lot of people were worried. A lot of people were confused and I wanted to at least give my testimony. That is something that God has called me, called all of us to do. We are to give our testimony. We are to evangelize. And if I had this entire fan base on here, I have to come and do the healing work of confronting the old man and telling people, hey, like, y'all could join me on this journey, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. And it doesn't have to be right now. You know, this is not for me to convince anyone of anything, but just giving you a testimony. And like I said, it doesn't make me look good. So there is no grift. There's no underhanded intention. Um to get anyone on my side whatsoever. Whether you think I'm on the right path or the wrong path, <laughs> I need your prayers, guys. So pray for me. I just wanted to tell the truth of who Jesus was in my life and how he moved in my life. And when God comes into your life, it's a mess. It's ugly. It's nasty. To tell your testimony is not a, a, a proud thing. We cannot boast of anything that we've done by the works of our hand, but the only thing that we can boast about is that we are saved and our name is written in heaven only by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. I know there's a lot of y'all that's tight and y'all are hot still, and y'all are just like, this guy is with this Jesus nonsense. This guy is with this God nonsense. Listen, one of the things that hurts my heart the most is that I was in that position. I was the one that hated Christians. I hated Christians. I was against it because I grew up in the church, you know, and then I had my hurts and I was vehemently against God. So I know, bro, like I can't even, I can't even blame you. What I can blame you for is I can't even blame you, bro. I could tell you to search the truth, but I thought I was searching for the truth. And, you know, a lot of times we think we're searching for the truth. And we're really not open. We're just searching for something that's going to confirm our beliefs. So all I could do is pray that you could come to some understanding and just apologize for just an unfortunate and, and hurtful circumstance. Because there was times where when I was in the world, they were my favorite creators. And when they turned Christian, I was, I was, I was hot. I was heated. I was like, now nah, this dude is talking about all this Jesus stuff. And 
you know, I, I, he's delusional and he's crazy. I was, I was there. I was there. I've, all of the people that saying, oh, check out Islam, check out the Emerald Tablets and all this. I, in my testimony, I'll talk about how I went through a lot of different religions. I was studying all these different religions. And this is the only one that I'm comfortable with professing and proclaiming to the world because of the level of evidence, because of the level of conviction personally and the testimony of the entire world and the history that's been written throughout. And yes, the Bible is a history book because anything before cameras is just written down. It's just words on pages. That's, that's all the history we have. So if you're going to say the Bible is not a historical document, atheists, religious scholars, they all know that the Bible is a historical document backed by many manuscripts. I understand that it's not really a rational issue, but it's a heart issue. If you, if you truly want to understand why I have went this way, why this so-called wise and smart, intelligent person has now become a fool for Christ, if you want to understand, you have to have an open heart. You have to be honest with yourself. Am I willing to forgo and forget everything that people have said about Christianity and Christ and the church, the good things and the bad things, and just try to discover for myself, what is it about this Jesus guy that is such a big deal that his followers went from a persecuted minority that has tried to get snuffed out so many times to now it's the majority religion of the entire world and it's being preached to the nations. What is it about it? That's all I can say to you. You have to take an honest and open heart look at these things. Because I took, I had an open heart when I looked at Buddhism and Muslims and the things that atheists would say. I had an open heart on, on trying to understand those things in order to come to the truth of who Christ is. So if you're not ready, then you're not ready. There's a lot of things that we all have to heal from um, that have come from the church. Because there's pain all over the world. And somebody, somebody being a Christian... Or, or you walk into a into a building that, that says, oh yeah, we're a church. That's not going to protect anybody from getting hurt. People, people hurt and get hurt before and after they get saved. That's, that's the sad reality of our fallen world. But nonetheless, whatever you decide from seeing this video, God bless you. I wish the best for all of you. And I genuinely mean it. I genuinely wish that God would move profoundly in your life. And whether it's now or 20 years from now or even on your deathbed, two minutes before you pass away, that you can come to a full understanding of who Christ is. So whoever you are, for me or against me or indifferent, I truly pray that. For those of you who are here for the ride with me, I thank you. I thank you for your support. I thank you for your encouragement. I need it. I know it seems like I'm a strong person, but I'm a human being. Um, this, it's a heavy time, but I have to go through the fire, right? It's a heavy time. So I thank you guys for those that are with me, and I hope that we can just grow together here. Lord, I thank you, and I exalt you. You alone are worthy of all the praise and we will wait for you we will wait on you we will wait on your call we will wait for you to take every step within us guide my steps guide my eyes and veer my eyes forward so that it's never veering to the left nor to the right I set my eyes on you keep it there please and help us amen